Hi. In a recent video, I demonstrated the use of this uh, start bar selector GUI, which is written in the processing application, um, for controlling Sonic Pi when it was feeding out some MIDI to uh, Logic Pro. Uh, this was in conjunction with the development version of Sonic Pi, where um, the use of MIDI is being developed. But uh, I thought it'd be nice to apply it just to uh, the standard release version. Uh, I'm running here version 2.11.1 on my Mac. Um, you can see down here. And uh, this program will also work with the release version 2.11 uh, on Raspberry Pi. Um, I've had a, a brief look at using it with Windows as well, but there are one or two difficulties which I'm still um, uh, trying to overcome, but uh, I hope that it will be possible to use it there as well um, before too long. So just to uh, show the sort of things that it can do, um, I've got a very long program here which uh, plays a piece by Monteverdi called Beata Sphere. In fact, the piece is so long that you can't play it directly from this uh, buffer in Sonic Pi, even though it fits there. Um, and instead, you have to use a built-in command which is introduced uh, in, in, uh, in Sonic Pi, uh, which is the run file command. It's only in the latest versions. And this enables you to play the file remotely uh, just from where it is held in your filing system. Mine is in my documents folder and I have a subfolder called SB from XML um, and it's Beatosphere controlled. I put an RF at the end of the name there just to remind me that I need to use run file to run it and it won't run directly. So if we start this running, it doesn't actually do anything because the program is set to wait for a start signal from the GUI over here. And uh, we'll discuss in a, a bit later on how that works. Uh, I just want to, to give you a flavour of what the uh, GUI can do. Um, and uh, over here I've got a PDF printout of the music that it's going to play. Uh, this has actually got nine parts. I think it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, it's quite a long piece, um, but it does code and play quite nicely in Sonic Pi. So let's start that playing from the beginning. If you read music, you can see it. Now, I want to stop it. I just press the stop button there. And I can immediately go and press play again and start again at the beginning. So it's very easy to stop and start like this without having to go anywhere near Sonic Pi. It is even possible to code this so that it will work from a remote machine, but normally it's just convenient to have the control here. Particularly if you want to just study a piece of music and don't want to have to wait for 200 bars before you get to the section that you want to look at. For example, if we move a bit further through the score here, you'll see that after about 60 bars or thereabouts, uh, if I can get to the right place, it's quite a long way into the piece. Um, where have we got to 71? That's gone a bit too far. Uh, here we are. In bar 62, you'll notice that the uh, key signature, which is uh, the time signature, which is in 4-4, four, four, four crotchets in a bar there, changes at this point to have six crotchets in a bar, and also the uh, tempo, which is uh, given by this symbol up here, changes to 240 crotchet beats per um, per minute, whereas it was uh, a much slower value uh, back at the beginning, it was, I think, 90. So it actually speeds up, although it makes the music sound a bit slower because there are more beats in the bar that are actually taking place there. Uh, I'll just move back to bar 62 here, and what I want to show you is that we can actually use this to start at or near that point. In order to illustrate the change in tempo, I'm going to start two bars earlier than that. So that's bar 62, that's bar 60. And I simply do that by clicking on BS plus here, holding the mouse button down, and you can see that the uh, value of the current start bar, uh, I want it at 60, there we are, has been set there to 60. So when I click the play button here, then that information is sent to Sonic Pi, and that's where it will start playing at this point in the music. Here we go. Here's the time change and the key signature and the uh, tempo change as well. Let's do that again so you can see it once more. 
you up for the tempo change? No. And change it to 6-4. And that stays like that a long way on for about to about 198, I think it is. So rather than listen right way through to here, we'll just go and illustrate the other end of the procedure, which is up here bar 198 it changes back to 4-4 and the original tempo again so let's start playing two bars before that at 196 and we simply sit on here while that increases up to 196 and we'll get there in a minute there we are it's 195 one more gone too far there we are oops we are 196 and we're going to click on play and we'll start playing from the beginning of this page in the score. Here we go. And we're back to the original again. So that gives you a brief flavour of what we can actually do with this and that now brings us to the question of how it can be achieved and that's what we'll look at in the second part of this video.